out there to all of you phenomenal viewers of Speak, Lead, and Grow, D57's podcast, where we always have a message in mind. Today, we're continuing the exciting interview th in three parts that we've been doing with the world champion of public speaking. Let me repeat that because I want you to get it. We are talking with the world champion of public speaking, Luisa Montalvo. My name is Dee Marie, and I'm going to be one of the co-hosts for today. And my fellow co-host is Lisa. Lisa, would you introduce yourself? Good evening. Thank you so much, Louisa. We really appreciate you being here with us once again. And thank you, Dee. These, these three episodes are, are just, just an incredible opportunity. Thank you. So I'm Lisa Thompson. I am the public relations manager for District 57, and I'm thrilled to be here. Back to you, Dee. So I haven't officially said, but I am the podcast chair for District 57. I love talking, and I don't know whether you picked that up in these three episodes or not, but I thoroughly enjoy talking. And when the subject is as exciting and motivating and inspiring as the world champion of public speaking, that's a lot to talk about. So I'd like to have Luisa Montalvo introduce herself. Luisa. Thank you so much, Dee Marie and Lisa, for having me. I'm Luisa Montalvo, and I'm here in South Texas, where I was born and raised. I worked at Abbott Laboratories for approximately 25 years. I retired at the age of 53 and took a few years off and then started helping the homeless dogs here in South Texas by transporting and fostering them. And that is now my passion to help these dogs with a free spay and neuter clinic. I think it's the answer to getting the street, the dogs off the streets. And along the way, I've been Toastmaster member for 13 years combined and just recently won a contest and I'm ecstatic about it. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I can understand you being ecstatic because I didn't win and I'm ecstatic for you. <laughs> so that is amazing. Absolutely. I found you to be so amazing, so dedicated to your craft committed to telling stories and sharing your stories with us. So I want to take you back to that night. It's the final round. You're excited. The Ballard County is taking place. What is going on inside your head, especially when you hear the announcer say, Luisa Montavo, you are number one and you are our world champion of public speaking for 2024. What happened to you at that moment? Thank you so much for helping me relive that all over again. I knew at the end of my speech that I had made mistakes. So I had already given up the idea of actually winning first place. I did have the speakers in chronological order the way I thought they would place. I did have Hannah being number one, and I had second and third place also chosen. Right now, I can't recall who they were. I do know that when we were on stage answering questions, which is right after we all had spoken, they get all the contestants on stage to have a little conversation with them, know more about them. When they announced, can we have all the judges in the lobby I went, oh, wow, There's there's got to be something going on. So it was a different feel just because I believe the only time that they've ever mentioned that that I've noticed is when there were disqualifications. So when I heard there were disqualifications, it really hurt me to know that some of these people to go start all the way from your club and make it all the way to the finals and then to be disqualified that just oh it's such a hard lesson to swallow because just because it seems like all that work and dedication was lost on something that maybe possibly could have been avoided um i i just felt really bad for those that were 
uh, however, on the other spectrum, I thought, okay, well, wait a minute. If there's been disqualifications and, and I had myself at eighth or seventh or sixth, maybe I can bump up to maybe third. And so they announced third place. And this whole time I'm talking to my cousin and my best friend and I've got him on FaceTime because they were watching the con the contest. And they said, third place, Anjali. And I went, okay, second place, Hannah. And I went, oh, no, that's not good. That means I was completely out in my mind. I thought, not placing. I'll come back next year and try and do it again. So when they actually announced my name, they said in first place, Luisa Montalvo, I was shocked, dumbfounded. Uh, it was not, I, I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I thought, you're kidding me, right? And I was just, I just was in disbelief. However, I do know that last year, I remember talking to my mom, and even though she wasn't really cognitive of everything I was saying, sometimes she would understand what I was talking about and sometimes not. I said, you know, mom, if I ever, if I win this year, but if I ever win, so there's one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk on stage and get my trophy. I won't be in crutches and I won't be in a wheelchair. I'll make sure of that. Mm -hmm. So when they announced my name, I stood up <clears throat> and I thought, okay, Luisa, can you make it from where you are to the stage? And I almost knew I couldn't. And right away, my district director, Yiding, got on one side and Lauren Parsons, who had mm -hmm. just been named as accredited speaker, she actually came up to congratulate me and I said, help me, please. And she so willingly grabbed one arm and mm -hmm. Yadin grabbed the other. And I just started walking and I'm thinking, okay. And it's, I probably could have been, and I was in pain. I don't remember that at all because mm -hmm. of the incident I'd had the night before where I had overstretched my muscles, my knee. And I just remember walking up there and the gentleman in the hats, I can't, I can't remember his name to save my soul. Such a beautiful soul he was because he saw me walking and yet he had the foresight to grab my wheelchair and mm. roll it up there and put it up on the stage for me in case I needed it. Wow. And I, I remember going up the stairs and he's there with my wheelchair and I told Lauren, thank you so much. And she went to go sit down and I told you, thank you so much. And they said, are you okay? And I said, I've got this. I've got this. Wow. And I, all, all I all I did was focus and zero in on that trophy. And I looked at the gentleman with my wheelchair. I said, I'm good. I'm going to do this. And I was able to make it, I think it was like five steps without wow. falling, which was great. And I, I thought, wow, you, you did it. You did it. Yes, yes, you did. Talk about vulnerability and storytelling. Lisa, your question. Right. So share with us how becoming the world champion of public speaking has changed your life? So many different things. It's, believe it or not, it's forced me to be organized, which I never was. Mm -hmm. and, and just to show you what I'm talking about, this is September's, and I had to go get a planner. Wow. There's sure a lot in there, Louisa. And it oh my like every God. Minute. So now I have to check my emails, which I'm terrible at. I have to check my LinkedIn. I have to check my Facebook. I have to check my text messages. And I'm just writing and writing and writing and writing. And mm -hmm. the, the, I've, I've never been able to keep a journal or a, or any kind of anything. So for this to, to see, because here, see July, nothing, nothing. <laughs> I'm sure that's wow. going to get filled up in no time. I think you Absolutely. might need a personal assistant. Absolutely. That is and exciting. I'm happy to volunteer for that job. <laughs> Thank you. You know just, what? Thank you so much. I've had so many people volunteer. When I'm getting ready to travel, I'll be in Europe for about three and a half weeks. So I've had volunteers to carry my luggage, to carry me, wow. to carry my that's wheelchair. Right that is amazing. Books, respond to your email. That yes. is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> Well, let me just say congratulations again, because when you talk about all that you went through and all that you accomplished, it just touches anybody's heart. So what is the one advice? What's the one thing that you would tell a new Toastmaster who has set goals to enter into the speech contest 
on that long road to the World Championship of Public Speaking? What's the one thing that they need to know? I would think one of the things, because there's quite a few of them. One of the things is you've got to have thick skin <laughs> because people are going to tell you you're not a good speaker. People are going to tell you, quit competing. The, the, the judges never getting you to walk up on stage and get that trophy. You've got to have thick skin and don't take anything personal. Don't take anything personal personal because you are competing against yourself mm -hmm. no one else no one else you've got other speakers that are good great I mean, go be great yourself but compete against yourself get better every day get better every month every year and eventually i mean again you've heard this so many times if i can do it anybody can do it so <laughs> there you go perseverance patience yep mm -hmm. keep just keep going yeah, I've been working on thickening my skin, and it, it's not easy, not easy to do. You know, all you got to do is kind of push me a little bit, and I'm in tears. So it's it's a challenge. It's great that you've been able to do that. How do you plan to use your platform to inspire and influence others, especially people who have limited mobility? I think just by sharing my stories. Mm. Everything I've been through, everything I'm going through, the one comment of the gentleman, you know, oh, do, does she really need a wheelchair? Are you kidding me? I mean, well, again, you're going to get people coming at you. You got to get that thick skin going for people that think that in a wheelchair or, or on crutches or no mobility for people that think that that's going to be an obstacle. You know what it is, mm. but it's going to be something you can hurdle. You can get around it. You can go under it. You can go around it. You can go through it. There's a way. There's a way. And you know what? If there hasn't been a way invented yet, go make one. Go make one. That is, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. That is not a reason why you shouldn't try. Now, that should be the reason why you should try. Yes. Because m you might be the one that's going to be able to say, hey, look, I tried it this way. Anybody now can do this. Yes. So you've, you've really set a great example. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So Thank let you. me ask you, Louisa, in your neighborhood or in your community, do you notice a difference in the people that used to treat you one way in your community and now they're treating you differently? What would that look like? Or they just don't even know that you won <laughs> or aren't, aren't acknowledging it or don't follow things like that as closely as we do? I. The thing is, the beauty is all four clubs that are here in South Texas, I visit them frequently, if not once a month, you know, maybe twice a month. But it's, gosh, they are so good because nobody treats me differently and I wouldn't want anybody to treat me differently. I, I think I'm an open book. I think if anybody needs any help or wants anything, they know either call Luisa, I'm going to find a way to get whatever needs to get done, done. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want, I, I will tell you this, when you go to a Toastmaster, well, when I'm going to go to a Toastmasters convention, this last one, oh my gosh, I will tell you the difference is for some reason this year, I had more people come up to me and ask if they could hug me. Mm. And that, you know, 2019, it was, can I take your picture? Can I mm -hmm. can get take a selfie? And, congratulations and shake the hand and picture but this year i think covid really probably messed with us mentally emotionally and physically to where everybody's like can i just hug you and i'm like sure you can yeah so i i thought that was really really special and and it's just to see that people want that mm -hmm. or need that and again my mom always taught me when somebody when you go to hug somebody you're not the first to let go you know, you hold on to somebody and you let go when they let go because that person wow. just might need that extra long little hug from you that they wow. that they haven't gotten from anybody else. So hmm. I thought that was really cool about this year. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that also. I was at a theatrical event the other night and everybody just wanted a hug. 
So it was, yeah, I think we've missed that throughout the pandemic. So have you been aware of people's perception of you shifting since winning? Their perception of me, no. I I was recently honored by the small city right next to us, which is McAllen, Texas. I had two Toastmasters from my home club, Hub City Toastmasters. They worked for the city of McAllen, so they knew the mayor. They spoke with the secretary and asked, what do we need to do to be able to get Louisa her own day on the calendar in the city? And so they were able to do that, fill out the paperwork and submitted it. And so now September 13th is, it was a Friday the 13th, which I absolutely love. But now September the 13th in McAllen, Texas is Luisa Montalvo Day. And I'm like, woo, there you go. I'm going to walk around with that and see if I can get a, a free taco or a, or a free <laughs> bubble gum or wow. a free gas tank or anything. Wow. Flag yeah. with your name on it, a, a, wow. an extra donation for the dogs. That, yes. That's great. Yes. That would be that amazing. is amazing. That's amazing. So now that all of the euphoria has subsided and all of the cheering that happened on that first euphoric night, the convention, all of that has settled down. Would you say that you've had a reality check or are you on sort of like a wave that just has you going? Reality check, I don't think so. Wave, I don't think so. I'm still way up here. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to be there for a few years. Oh my be goodness. Because for somebody that did not think it was attainable this year. Wow. It's, it's, I wake up in the morning and I go, did you do that? Did you just do that? Uh, yeah. You just did that. So <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to be way up here for the next couple of years. Amazing. Well, hopefully it takes all of your pain away. <laughs> so yeah, I think the more of those different visits that you do and different appointments that you make, the the higher it goes. Mm -hmm. So every rung just goes higher and higher and and the dogs are waiting. There you go. Absolutely. And and just to let you know that during my incident with the accident, all the Toastmasters that continued to check in on me and and send me messages and mail and I mean it got me through probably the hardest time of my life because to be away from family and friends 2,000 miles away for three months and not know anybody that was hard oh, that was sure. hard but but you know just sitting there and opening mail and getting text messages and calls Gosh, you know, the, my Toastmaster family, they're, they're everything to me. So that was really special. Yeah, that, that is really amazing. amazing. That Do is you amazing. feel that you have an image or reputation to live up to as the world champion of public speaking? I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm probably going to be the worst WCPS <laughs> that Toastmasters has seen because I still say things like gonna. Instead of going to, I gave a table topic today and I think I said three so's. I'm like, oh my God, Lisa. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm just letting everybody out there know. I know that my crutch word is so, and I know I have run on sentences and keep saying and, and I know that I'm going to say gonna instead of going to, or should I instead of should have, but I'm trying to improve still. And <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what it's going to be. Continual so this improvement. Has, this has been it. amazing. It's been so rich. It's been something that we can embrace because I know you've impacted my life. And I'm excited for our viewers because I know that you have them excited as well. So if there's somebody out here that has heard what Louisa has had to say, go to Meetup and check out one of our clubs that's having a meeting in your area. Sign up and go and find out what you need to know and what you need to do to get on this path that has Louisa so excited. And so she's still up there. She already told us that. So that might be a place that you want to go. But I have a final question, Louisa. After the contest season, your amazing win and the impact that you have had on to your Toastmasters journey has had on you, what's next for you? What is next? 
for you? Great question. I'm so excited to share this with you. Once all the, and I'm hoping it will never end. I'm hoping every year I get an invite from somewhere with Toastmasters. But I'm actually thinking about the accredited speakers program, something I probably wouldn't be interested in. But I think if I can turn this into, uh, I'm not going to say career because I'm too old to have a career and I'm fine with that. But if people want to pay me to speak, I can turn those funds around and use them for my Spain neuter to fund that project. Wow. It's, you know, the sky's the limit again, again, and leaps and bounds. So that to me would mean everything, everything. Yes. Can I tell you that your positivity is contagious? <laughs> I, it is absolutely contagious. And I'm Good. so excited that you have a passion that's going to help to fuel you into the next chapter of your life. We all need that. And I think that by having those goals, it helps to keep us young at heart and young in mind. And as long as our mindset is there, we can implement and do whatever comes, whatever presents itself, we're there. Mm -hmm. So Lisa, is there a last word that you want to leave with everyone? So we would love to invite you to come and do a training for our district in order to help people turn their ordinary speeches into amazing speeches. And you don't need to tell us a date now unless you would like to. We would like to do this sometime in January. We're pretty flexible. So if you do want to look at your book, that would be great. And in the meantime, I am Lisa Thompson, the Public Relations Manager for District 57. You can follow our podcast at district 50, at d57tm.org. You'll also be featured in our weekly Sunday Digest, our newsletter, our website, Facebook, LinkedIn, and on our YouTube channel. Please, to the audience, don't forget to watch podcast episodes one and two. They're really, really meant to be watched sequentially. So once all three are out, have a party, invite your club members, and watch all three podcasts together so that you can experience Louisa to the fullest degree and just become incredible like in Louisa has. So thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate everything you gave us tonight and throughout the three episodes. And we're looking forward to continuing to, to have you in our lives and in our hearts. So thank you. So can you now see and understand why Speak, Lead, and Grow is a podcast that can begin to grow on you? And that is our hope. We've had a wonderful three episodes with Luisa Montalvo, the world champion of public speaking. She became our public speaker here on this podcast. She showed us how it's done. She started us out when she was a child in elementary school and took us straight through to the night or the day or the evening that it was announced that she had become the winner. And our emotions followed that path that she took us down. And we couldn't help but stand with her when she said she stood up. My back straightened up because I understood what she was saying. And then she said she was escorted down front by people that were there, amazing. And she talked about the Toastmaster family. We all consider ourselves as a family in Toastmasters. So you need to come aboard and find out what that is. But first of all, you need to watch each episode, one, two, and three, parts one, two, and three, to get a full understanding of the impact that Louisa Montalvo's journey has had on all of us and can have on you. So I'd like to ask you for some closing words, just some bit of advice. Louisa, that you'd like to leave with the viewing audience for our podcast here in D57? Absolutely. Thank you so much again, D. Marie and Lisa. The one thing that I had shared earlier was I knew I was going to need assistance getting to the stage without my wheelchair. 
and exactly what my speech had embodied about strangers. Yiding, our district director for D55, and Lauren Parsons, who I just met at the Credited Speakers Program. I had met her two nights before. We were there sharing dinner at the same restaurant. These were strangers to me. And yet, when I needed help, and that's probably the hardest, hardest thing for me to do is ask for help because that's just not me. But I knew I was going to need help. And they both rushed to my side and got me up on stage. And that's, that's, that's exactly what my speech was about. I think Toastmasters is such a beautiful organization because even though there were 1,700 strangers there that night, mm -hmm. I know about 500 came up to me and wanted a hug. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's gold. Mm -hmm. That is gold. I, I know people join Toastmasters because they want to become better speakers or learn how to lead, become leaders. You know, you can, you can, you can leave if you want, but why? You know, you've got a Toastmaster family that would do almost anything and everything for you. And again, that's just golden. That's golden. That's all. Thank you so very much. This has been phenomenal. And I also want to thank you for allowing us to share in your vulnerability. And we highlighted it for the simple reason that we want people to understand that their ability to need assistance in terms of with their mobility can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. And you ended up being the world champion of public speaking. Yeah. What an inspiration to everyone out in District 57, speak, lead, and grow land. Oh my goodness. Until next time, we want you to speak, lead, and grow. Thank you.